1954 World Championship football game is on the air. Yes, it's time to enjoy life with Miller High Life, the beer that's acclaimed the national champion of quality as the Miller Brewing Company of Milwaukee and their coast-to-coast -coast family of Miller High Life dealers and distributors bring you today's championship battle between the Detroit Lions and the Cleveland Browns. And this is Earl Gillespie speaking from Municipal Stadium here in Cleveland, Ohio, where this afternoon we're all set for one of the great and thrilling sports attractions of the year, the battle for the National Football League title. And for the fifth straight year, Coach Paul Brown leads in his Cleveland Browns. They won the title back in 1950. Since then, they are still going to regain that championship. On the other hand, the third straight affair for the Detroit Lions in this championship struggle, and they are going after an unprecedented third straight championship in pro football. This game is being carried by over 500 mutual stations, Armed Forces Radio, Alaska, and into Hawaii. The temperature here in Cleveland this afternoon is 53 degrees. Overcast skies with broken clouds, we see some big patches of blue, and it's a very surprising day because just last Sunday, in the last game of the regulation season for these two teams, they battled it out in a snowstorm with a temperature down in the low 20s. Today it is 53 with the overcast skies. The wind will be a negligible factor this afternoon. It's out of the west at five miles per hour. And our radio booth is located on the south side of the playing field. We are on about the 40-yard line. The field runs east and west. And at this very moment, the Cleveland Browns starting lineup is being introduced. Just a few seconds ago, the defending world champions were introduced. Buddy Parker's Detroit Lions. We have the starting lineup, so quickly here they are for the Lions visiting here at Municipal Stadium today. At left end, Daryl Brewster. At left tackle, Lou Groza. The left guard is Abe Gribben. The center is Frank Katsky. At right guard, Chuck Noel. The right tackle is Johnny Sandusky. And the right end, the veteran Danny Lavelli. In the backfield, the peerless passer, Otto Gray, on the quarterback. At left half, rookie, Chet Hanulak. At fullback, Morris Bassett. And the right halfback is Billy Reynolds. For the Cleveland Browns, or rather, we just read you the Cleveland Browns starting lineup. For the Detroit Lions, it'll be at the end, Dorn Dibble and Leon Hart. At the tackles, Luke Kriegmer and Charlie Unney. At guard, Tommy Sewell and Dick Stanfell. The center will be Andy Makita. In Detroit's backfield, Bobby Lane at quarterback. Duke Walker at left half. Luke Carpenter at right half. And Bill Bowman will be the starting fullback. Well, fans, it looks like action is about to get underway. And while we await that opening kickoff, here is a friendly word from your host. You know, fans, one of pro football's many outstanding stars is Tobin Roach quarterback of the Green Bay Packers. A five-year veteran, Rode has the right combination of the right ingredients to make an outstanding quarterback. A strong, accurate throwing arm, calm judgment, baffling deception, plus a determined will to win. And as a member of the Miller Brewing Company's sports and special events department, Tobe will tell you that Miller High Life also has the right combination of the right ingredients. The very choices of hand-selected hops, the very finest of brewing facilities and brewing skill, an old world formula that just can't be duplicated. All this, plus the determination to brew the very best in beer. No wonder Miller High Life is acclaimed the national champion of quality. Now, you fans can be a star quarterback in the refreshment league. Just call out your signals loud and clear for refreshing Miller High Life beer. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is Chris Shankel speaking at Municipal Stadium as 40,000 football fans are about set to watch Lou Groza kick from left to right to the defending world champion Detroit Lions. And the fellow that uh, will bring you all the exciting action is ready to step in as we go to our right. Here again is Earl Gillespie. The opening whistle. This championship game is underway. Groza boots. It's high and it's end over end. Christensen and Gerard, the deep men. It's Jack Christensen, number one, the five, cutting to his right now to the 10 of the 15-yard line. Hit on the 15 and dropped down at about the 18-yard line by Chuck Knoll of Dayton University. First and 10 now for the Detroit Lions. And Coach Buddy Parker will probably stick with that quartet which has raised such havoc in the National Football League this season. Bobby Lane at quarterback. Dilk Walker at left half. Bill Bowman, a very fine rookie from William & Mary at fullback. And uh, Luke Carpenter will be the right halfback. 
At the end, Dorn Dibble and possibly Jug Girard. We'll check as they come out of the lineup. Girard is at right end. Plank wide to the left now is Duff Walker. Laying us over the Cleveland defense. First and ten for the Detroit Lions. The spin, the fake, the handoff this time, and up the middle, going across to the 30, the 35, the 40, the 45, and down across the midfield. Down to the 40, and finally pulled down from behind on the 33-yard line by Tommy James was Lou Carpenter. A great run that time. Or rather, Bill Bowman, the rookie from William & Mary, right up the middle on a trap play, and he found the daylight. And there is one of the sensational runs on the very first play from scrimmage out here in Cleveland, Ohio, this afternoon. First and ten for the Detroit Lions down on the Cleveland 33-yard line. Doak Walker flanked wide to the left. The right end, Doug Gerard has split about ten yards. Bobby Lane pitches out this time. A fumble in the backfield recovered by Cleveland. And picking up the football now and running with the ball is Johnny Kessel with the left tackle. But the whistle had blown. A pitch out that time from the quarterback Bobby Lane was followed in the backfield. And it was the big left tackle of coach Paul Brown, Cleveland Browns, Johnny Kissel of Boston College, who fell on that loose pigskin. First and ten, and there is a break for Cleveland. Now let's see the Browns can capitalize. One of the great players in the history of pro football, the very fine quarterback, Otto Graham, says he is playing his last pro football game today. Out comes Cleveland, first and ten, on its own 37-yard line. Graham is the quarterback. Otto has his end split about five yards. Graham looking over the Detroit defense. Otto Graham is back to pass. He looks, he throws, it's deflected. Intercepted by Joe Schmidt on the 45, down to the 40-yard line. Joe Schmidt is falling down to about the 35. What a rousing start out here in Municipal Stadium today. A fumble, then a pass interception, and that was a great catch by Joe Schmidt in his second year with Detroit from the University of Pittsburgh. The pass was partially deflected on the line of scrimmage, and Schmidt reaching over his right shoulder, grabbed the ball at about the 47, and rolled down to the Cleveland 35. First and 10 for the Lions. Great T formation of the backfield. Doug Gerard, the right end, stood out about 10 yards. Lane fakes the handoff to Dope Walker, back to pass. He throws a looper down here for Dorn Dibble. He dropped the ball down the five-yard line. Incomplete. Dibble had a clear shot for a TD that time, down to the five, off his right shoulder. Calling him out that time was the veteran Tommy James of Ohio State. What a year for the Ohio sports fans. The American League pennant for the Cleveland Indians. The Big Ten title for the Buckeyes of Ohio State and the Eastern Division Championship for Paul Brown's Brown. Second down, 10 yards to go now for the Lions. who huddle back on the 45-yard line. That was a looping pass thrown by Bobby Lane. Lane, one of the great quarterbacks in the game from the University of Texas in his seventh year, 6'1", 195 pounds. Lane brings his team up to the line of scrimmage here on the 35-yard line. Second down, 10 yards to go. Plank wide to the left is Doak Walker. Back to pass lane. He's running wide. He throws a screen that is complete to Carpenter, but he is cut from behind. A very fine tackle by Johnny Kessel. That time it was Carpenter on a screen pass. He rolled down for three yards at third and seven as he moved down to the 32-yard line. And that was an ankle-high tackle by Johnny Kessel. It's Glenn Ford and Carlin Massey at the end. Johnny Kissel and Don Colo at the tackles. Mike McCormick, the middle man on the five-man line for the Cleveland Browns. Tommy Kaplan, Walt Michaels, the linebackers. Warren Lahr, Don Paul, Kenny Collins, and Tom James rounding out the defensive backfield. Plank wide to the left is Walker on a third down and seven. He's back to pass, or rather Bobby Lane back to pass because he's going to run. He's out of the 30, and he is pulled down on the Cleveland 28-yard line. Glenn Ford on the bottom of the pile, getting up now. Helped out by Don Colo, the captain of Cleveland. 6'3", a 260-pounder. So now we have that big down coming up for Cleveland. And they send in a possible kicking unit down here on the Cleveland 28-yard line. It's going to be an attempted field goal. And trying will be Doak Walker. Bobby Lane holding on the 36-yard line. The ball is snapped. The boot is up in the air. This one is end over end. It is... What is it? We're waiting now for the signal. It is not good. It is not good. End over end. Slightly off to the left. It is good. Finally, the signal from the officials. 
The kick is good enough, makes the score. Detroit three, the Cleveland Browns nothing. Yes, fans and all over America, the score is millions more in favor of Miller High Life, the beer that's cheered as the national champion of quality. And so the world champion Detroit Lions jump off to a three to nothing lead on a 36 yard field goal by the mighty Mustang, Dope Walker. Jim Martin kicking off for the Detroit Lions. It comes down and it's taken here on the 15 yard line by Billy Reynolds to the 20, the 25, the 30. He breaks into the clear. He might go. He's to the 45, the 50. And they catch up to him and pull him down on the Detroit 41. There was a sensational return of that kickoff by Billy Reynolds in his second year from the University of Pittsburgh. And the Cleveland Browns go on right back now. They have moved into Detroit territory down on the 41-yard line. Ball is 20 yards in from the far side of the playing field. Cleveland is moving to our right. Field runs east and west. Wind to the back. Otto Graham brings his team out of the huddle. First and 10. Down on the Detroit 41. The flank wide to the right now is Dub Jones. Here is a fake. The handoff goes to the fullback. Pass it. He gets up for about two yards. Down to the Detroit 38-yard line. Morris Bassett off his left guard. Was stopped by Laverne Torgus, the number 53 of Washington State. Incidentally, we mentioned the fact that Otto Graham is probably playing his last football game of his brilliant career. Also, the big middleman in Buddy Parker's line, Les Bigaman from the University of Illinois, 300 plus. He goes about 350 pounds. Graham has... Renfro set as a flanker to the right. Otto Graham looking over the Detroit defense. The left end set out about 10 yards. Here's the spin, the pitch back. This time goes to Dub Jones. Trying to circle his right end. He can't turn the corner. He turns it for about four yards. That is shoved out of bounds. Very hard by Sherwin Gandy. Helped out also by Jack Christensen and Joe Schmidt. He stepped out of bounds. Almost on the midfield stripe. So it is now a fourth down coming up. The ball is on the Cleveland 49-yard line. And back in the punt formation goes one of the great kickers in the history of pro football, Horace Gillum. Horace Gillum standing back on the 34-yard line. Christensen and Gerard back on the uh, double safety now for the Detroit Lions. Here's the boot. High kick, and here is a penalty on the kick for roughing the kicker. Gerard takes the call for a free, a rather... Let's see, there might be a double penalty on this play now as Gerard signaled for a fair catch. He was hit down on the seven-yard line. Roughing the kicker was called back here on the 35-yard line. And now Otto Graham is out checking with one of the officials here on the 49. Back in punt formation, Horace Gillum was Dropped down after punting to Jeff Gerard, who took the ball to about the seven-yard line. And the officials are now lining up the football. The score is Detroit three. The Cleveland Browns nothing. against the Detroit Lions. They march the ball down to the 35-yard line. Roughing the kicker is called against the Lions. So there is a break for the Browns to regain possession. And they move down to the 35 where it's going to be a first and 10. Detroit scoring on a booming field goal by Duke Walker. Early in this first quarter, score is 3-0 in favor of the Lions. with nine minutes and five seconds remaining in the first period. Straight T formation in the backfield. Second down, 12 yards to go. A loss of two that time by Bassett as he tried to turn his right end. Otto Graham dropping back to pass, looks downfield. He throws a long looper down here and into the clear and down into the end zone goes. Ray Renfro for the touchdown. pass from Otto Graham to his left halfback Ray Renfro who had gotten behind the two pass defenders on about the seven yard line 
And it was easy for Ray to scoot into the end zone to score a 6-3 in favor of the Cleveland Browns. And now Lou the Toe Groza will try for the extra point. Holding is Tommy James. James kneeling down to the nine-yard line. Waiting for the snap from center. There it is. The ball is placed. The boot is up in the air. This one is good. And so the score stands. Cleveland 7, the Detroit Lions 3. A reminder, fans, your host for this 1954 championship classic, the Brewers of Miller High Life, the genuine Milwaukee beer. And here at Municipal Stadium, genuine professional football. And as the saying goes, there is no football like pro football, as now the Cleveland Browns, seeking their first National Football League title here in the first period, have a 7-3 lead over the Detroit Lions. And Otto Graham, who last year, in losing to Detroit, had such a bad year, looked brilliant as he hit Ray Renfro for the touchdown. Now the kickoff, and here's Earl. In the deep position, Jeb Girard and Jack Christensen, a booming kickoff by Grozes, taken by Christensen on the goal line. He's going to come out to the 5, the 10, the 15. He's hit and dropped down. He was hit that time by Don Paul on the Detroit 19-yard line. Jack Christensen to the goal line to the 19. Or did he make the 20? They put the ball on the 20-yard line. We're first and 10 for the Detroit Lions, who send in Dorn Dibble and Judd Gerard at the end. Bobby Lane at quarterback. Duke Walker, the left half. Bill Bowman is the fullback. And the right halfback, I believe is Hunchy Hornchmeyer. We'll check. We see the number four down there. Carpenter wears number 34. Here is Bobby Lane handing off and rolling out to about the 25-yard line. Brought down by Warren Lahr and Tommy James. That was a gain of approximately five yards. It's second down. Five yards to go. Bill Bowman, the ball carrier that time for the Detroit Lions. Out comes Detroit. Flanker wide to the left this time is Doak Walker. Bobby Lane calling signals at quarterback. Quick count. He's back to pass. Looking downfield. He's going to get hit. He throws. And this one is complete to Devil on the 35, the 40. And Devil is caught and dropped down on the Detroit 40-yard line by Walt Michaels. Walt Michaels helped out by Len Ford. Defensive end will drop back that time. Complete the Dorn Dibble, and that guy has real shifty feet. He can really move out there. He made it across the 40 to the 41, where it's first and 10 for the Lions, who trail by four points, 7 to 3 the score. Doug Gerard moves wide to the right. Doak Walker is set as a flanker to the left. Bobby Lane on first and 10 of the 41, and a quick uh, handoff to Hunchmeyer. Pounds his way over his right tackle to approximately the 45 yard line. We have seven minutes and five seconds remaining in this first quarter. The score is seven to three in favor of Cleveland. Detroit Hollows back on the 35-yard line. Second down, seven yards to go for the Lions. They have the ball on their own 43-yard line. Flanker to the left this time is Dope Walker. Lane again, this time he fakes. He comes out on the option series, and he's hit behind the line of scrimmage by Tommy Catlin, stepped back on the 40-yard line and helped out by the rookie from the University of Texas, Carlton Massey. So Walker, or rather Bobby Lane, lost four yards that time on the option play, running parallel to the line of scrimmage to his right. He was dropped back on the 40-yard line, so it's fourth and 11. And dropping back in the double safety now for Coach Paul Brown, number 46, Billy Reynolds, along with number 44, Chet Hanulak, the rookie from Maryland. It'll be Judd Girard in punt formation. Girard, a product of the University of Wisconsin, is standing on the 25-yard line. Fourth down, 11 yards to go for the Lions. The snap from center. Girard has plenty of time, gets off a high spiral, wobbly, and a fair catch is being signaled for, taken by Reynolds here on the 23-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Browns. First 
Santam for the Cleveland Browns. Into the backfield goes Dub Jones, Otto Graham, Morris Bassett, and number 26, Ray Renfro, who scored that touchdown on the brilliant pass from Otto Graham. Score 7 to 3. Five minutes and 45 seconds remain of the first quarter here at Municipal Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio. Third straight year, these two teams have battled it out for the National Football League Championship. Detroit has won twice. Straight T formation, the ends in tight. Otto Graham back to pass, drifts back to the 13. He is hit by Gandy, gets away from Sherwin Gandy, gets away from another Detroit Lion. He's in the 15, he's going to run to the 20, the 25, the 30 down the sideline, and he steps out of bounds. That time, Otto Graham got away from the eagerly searching hands of Sherwin Gandy, number 85, and also number 72, the rookie from Murray State, left tackle Gil Main. And he ran up the sideline and made it to the 30-yard line for a gain of seven yards at second down three. Second down, coming up for the Cleveland Browns, the huddle back on the 20-yard line. Cleveland with that four-point lead, seven to three to score. Dub Jones moves wide to the left. Danny Lavelli set wide to the right now as Otto Graham calls the signals. Otto Graham blocking him off. Hands off to Bassett. Bassett pounds up the middle, goes across the 30 to 35, and is still rolling as he was finally stopped at about the 39-yard line for the first down. Morris Bassett. A rookie who had a slow start in pro football this year, but when he came along, so did the Cleveland Browns. Cleveland dropped two of its first three league games this year, and for a while it looked like the Browns might not be in this game, but they buckled down, won eight straight before they lost last Sunday to the Detroit Lions on snow-swept field here at Municipal Stadium, 14-10. to 10. Great team formation. Otto Graham. Calling signals. Otto Graham dropping back to pass. He's back to the 35. He throws one down here. And it's intercepted beautifully and drops out of bounds. And let's see if they call it. It is a, an interception. An interception. There was a great play by Jack Christensen as he caught the ball. He was trying to stop his momentum from carrying him out of bounds. And as he tried to hold himself up, he dropped the football and rolled out of bounds, and so did he, but it's an intercepted forward pass. So the Detroit Lions stopped that threat, and they take over. Mixed emotions out here this afternoon. That time, it was Jack Christensen retaining possession long enough to have it called an interception. Wide to the left goes Joe Walker, first and 10 on the 35. A pass downfield is intercepted this time by the Cleveland Browns. On the 35 by Don Paul. He's down. He might go all the way now. He's the 15, the 10. He gets down inside the 10 and is finally caught. On the 8-yard line, Don Paul. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Paul football at its finest. Real thrills every minute. Interception back-to-back -back that time by Jack Christensen of Detroit by Don Paul of the Cleveland Browns. And now the Cleveland Browns are deep in Detroit territory inside the 10 on the 8-yard line. It's first down and goal to go. Dub Jones is out, and in goes Billy Reynolds. Ball on the 10-yard line of Detroit in Cleveland's possession. Out come the Browns. Wide to the right this time is Danny Lavelli. Flanker set to the left. Otto Graham back to pass, looks down, he throws a quickie over the line, it's complete on the three-yard line into the end zone, goes the Cleveland Brown, I believe that was Darrell Bluster, it was. A bullet pass from quarterback Otto Graham, complete to his left end, Darrell Bluster who caught the ball and was hit hard on the three-yard line, he crawled into the end zone. So the score is now 13-3 in favor of the Browns. Boy, this Cleveland Ball Club is striking back with a vengeance out here today. Lou Groves is trying for the extra point. Tommy James is holding. Ball is snapped its place. The boot is up in the air. This one is. The kick is good. And so the score stands. Cleveland 14 and the point three. Fans, remember the name. Miller Highline, your host for today's game. And the beer that brings you refreshment pleasure the year round.
Andy Makito is over the ball at center. Plank wide to the left is Doak Walker. The right end is Jug Gerard. Here is the handoff to the halfback. And I believe it is Punchmeyer who was spun around by Len Ford and dropped down on the 16-yard line. Punchy Horchmeyer carrying the mail that time, trying to go around his left end, was really spun around by Lenny Ford and dropped down for a loss on the play of a yard back to the 16-yard line at second 11. Second down 11. Second down 11 yards to go. And with about two minutes remaining in the first quarter, the Detroit Lions call for a timeout. The score is Cleveland 14 and the Detroit Lions 3. Otto Graham, fearless quarterback of the Cleveland Browns, who says that he is retiring after today's ball game, already has thrown for two touchdown passes. The first, a toss of some 40 yards to Ray Renfro, who went about five yards for the TD. And now after uh, 12 minutes of play, Graham to Darrell Brewster from a short distance away for the second touchdown. It's 14 to three Cleveland, and here again is Earl Gillespie. Second down 11 for Detroit, and a quick count. Bobby Lane rolls out back to pass, and the ball is batted down beautifully by Carlton Massey, the left end. Uh, quarterback Bobby Lane dropping back to pass, was throwing out of the right flap. The ball was batted to the ground by Carlton Massey. Time, the official timepiece, of course, is down on the playing field. Back in punt formation, drops Jug Girard, standing on the two-yard line. Renfro and Billy Reynolds, or Hanulak and Reynolds, are back in the double safety. Here is the boot by Girard. A low kick is taken here on the 45-yard line by Reynolds to the 50, down to the 45, he goes down the sideline, down to the 35, down to the 30, the 20, the 15, and he is finally caught on the 12-yard line by the booter, Judd Gerard. This boy, Billy Reynolds, has already proved to be a shining star here in this championship game in 1954. A great punt return that again puts Cleveland deep in Detroit territory down on the 12-yard line, and the last possible man to get him was the punter, Gerard, and he caught him around the knees and pulled him down. The leading kickoff return artist in the National Football League, Billy Reynolds, proving his worth out here to Coach Paul Brown. 14-3 is the score. Cleveland is leading. Time is running out. And the last minute of play here in the first quarter, 55 seconds to go. As they break the huddle, Otto Graham sends his half back. Renfro wide to the left. The left end is split about five yards. Otto Graham hands off to Bassett. He skirts off his right tackle. Goes down inside the 10, the 5, and he is caught on the 4. Laverne Torgerson pulling him down finally. Helped out by the secondary. Jack Christensen moving in. As Bassett planted off his right tackle and moved down to the four-yard line. And there is the gun. Ending the first quarter of the championship classic with the score standing, the Cleveland Browns 14 and the Detroit Lions 3. The field judge is Bill McHugh. That's more or less an all-star alignment of officials out of the National Football League. Action is resumed. Earl, tell us about it. It's first down inches to go for the Cleveland Browns. Down almost on that goal line. Otto Graham has a flanker set to the left. Otto Graham calling signals now at quarterback. Graham on a quarterback sneak. Throws into the end zone. football game that Mr. Otto Graham is displaying out here this afternoon. There's going to be a lot of talking, I think, in that Cleveland Brown front office to try to get out of the changes mind about retiring from this great game of pro football. Now trying with the extra point is Lou Grozes holding his Tommy James. They're all set to go. Waiting for the snap from center. The ball is placed. The boot is up in the air. This one is good. The kick is good. And so the score now stands. Cleveland, 21. The Detroit Lions, Three. The Cleveland Browns, two years in a row, out here two years ago, 17 to 7. 
And last year in a thriller at Briggs Stadium at Detroit, 17 to 16. They are gunning for an unprecedented third straight championship. Cleveland has other ideas. Bobby Lane hands off this time to Carpenter. He gets into the secondary, the 35, the 40. Carpenter might go all the way. One man has a chance, and he grabs him on the 35 and pulls him down inside that 30 on about the 28-yard line. And there was a sudden burst of speed by the white halfback, Lou Carpenter. He was pulled down finally by Don Paul, the only boy who had a chance to get him. Here on the 28-yard line at first and 10 for the Lions. And the Lions roar right back. Cleveland 22-yard line. It is fourth down, four yards to go. And the Lions come out. They're going to try for that first down. They are not going for the field goal. Turning by 18 points. Fourth and four. Bobby Lane uh, pitches out to Doak Walker around the left side of the line. Down to the 20. He goes. Down to the 15. Goes that great clutch. Ball player, and he's pulled down. Picked up the first and 10, and there was one of the great clutch players in the game today. The pitch back that time went from the quarterback, Bobby Lane, to his halfback, Doak Walker. As he turned his left end, he found the alley open for the first down as he moved inside the 15-yard line down to the 14-yard line. As they break the huddle, Lane sends Gerard wide to the right and Dorn wide to the left. Bobby Lane, calling signals, pitches out the same. Whoa, and a beautiful tackle back here on the 22-yard line. He pitched out to his fullback, Bowman, who was hit behind the line of scrimmage by Tommy Catlin, who shut the gap and really dropped him down. So now it is third down 18. Third and 18 for the Lions on the Cleveland 23-yard line. Detroit huddling on the 32. A big play coming up. The possession down. Plank to the right, you ride. Bobby Lane is dropping back to pass. Looks down. Feely throws up the middle. This one is caught by Devil. He's dropped down to the five-yard line. A beautiful leaping stab and a great catch by Dorn Devil. He was hit down immediately by Tommy James and Tom Catlin. And now the ball is down here on the four-yard line. And it's close enough to call for the chain gang. And out they go. This might be a first down inside the five. Oh, wait. They're stretching out the tape. It is short by about six inches. Fourth down and six inches to go for the Detroit Lions. Down to the Cleveland four-yard line. Makes up a four and a half. Bob Gain is going into the lineup for Coach Paul Brown, replacing Tommy James. Bob Gain, All-American from the University of Kentucky. Fourth down, six inches to go on the four-yard line. A pitch out to Bowman. Bowman to the five, the four, the three. Into the end zone goes Bill Bowman, the fullback. They needed six inches for the first and goal, and Bowman went all the way, four and a half yards into the end zone between his left end and his left tackle. And the score is now 21 to 9 in favor of the Cleveland Browns. Trying with the extra point is Doak Walker, holding is Bobby Lane. The Lions are poised. The snap from center of the ball placed the boot is up in the air. This one, the kick is good, and so the score now stands at Cleveland 21. And the Detroit Lions, 10. Horace Gillum. Gillum is standing on the Cleveland 23-yard uh, line. Snap from center. Takes plenty of time. He gets off a high, wobbly spiral and calling for a fair catch is Gerard on the 18-yard line. First and 10 for the Lions. Horace Gillum's punting gives his end Plenty of time to get down under that punt receiver. And that time, Gerard, as he caught the ball, was surrounded by Cleveland Browns. So it is first and 10 for the Detroit Lions on the 18-yard line of Detroit. Score is 21 to 10. We have nine minutes remaining in this first half here at Municipal Stadium, Cleveland, Ohio, on the shores of Lake Erie. 
Lang to the left this time is Gerard back to pass his lane. He throws out the right back, complete to Carpenter. He tries to cut. He slips, moves across the line of scrimmage to about the 24-yard line. Stopped out there by number 24, Warren Lahr, and number 82, Carlton Massey. Pass complete in the right flat behind the uh, line of scrimmage to the right halfback, Lou Carpenter, who made it up to the Detroit 24-yard line. We're at second down and approximately five yards to go. Detroit huddles back in the 15. Wearing their Honolulu blue jerseys with the silver helmets. Nikita's over the ball at center. Flanked right and left this time is Gerard. Here is the quarterback, Bobby Lane. Looking over, taking plenty of time right now. He pitches out to Bowman around the left side. Bowman across the line of scrimmage up to the 30-yard line, and he's hit very hard. Bill Bowman on a sweep around his left end was hit by Walt Michaels and Don Colo on the Detroit 30-yard line, just across the 30, where it is good for the first and 10. First down, 10 yards to go. Cleveland has an 11-point lead. The score is 21 to 10 as we play midway in the second quarter. A lot of excitement out here already. And a lot more thrills coming your way before this afternoon is over. Plank wide to the left once again is Gerard. The quick cut, the handoff this time goes to Carpenter off his left guard. He comes up for maybe five yards as he's dropped down on the 35-yard line. On the bottom is John Paul. John Paul. Making the tackle along with Mike McCormick. Carpenter moving up to the 35-yard line. Where it is now second down and six yards to go, a gain of four. Flanker to the left. The right end dribble is set out about 10 yards. Bobby Lane calling the signals. Lane in a quick, he's trying to throw a pass. The ball is knocked out of his hand, stolen away by Cleveland. Mike McCormick stole the football from Bobby Lane and the Browns take over on the Detroit 31-yard line. Great defensive maneuver by Mike McCormick, the rookie from Kansas University. From the University of Alabama, the white end. Gain of three yards. Second down, seven yards to go. Once again, Cleveland is inside that Detroit 30-yard line. And the Browns lead 21 to 10 out here at Municipal Stadium. As the Browns come out, they line up in a straight T formation. No flankers. The ends are in tight. Second down, seven. On the 28th, the fake by Graham. He rolls out of the pocket in the bootleg. He's back to pass throws, and it is fourth four, and it's, in, it's taken by Cleveland on the eight-yard line. Three men handle that football. And the boy who hung out of the pigskin was Ray Renfro after it was knocked out of the hands of Darrell Bluster by Jack Christensen. Ball was hit up into the air and it was taken out of the air beautifully by Renfro and his first and goal to go for the Browns down to the seven yard line. There was a break and now let's see if the Browns can capitalize on that break. Uh, first base between first and second base on the skin portion of the field which has been kept in uh, the best possible condition by the fine groundskeeper, Mr. Emil Bossard. Play is resumed, and once again, here is Earl Gillespie. Second down and five yards to go to a touchdown. The Cleveland Browns deep in Detroit territory. Here is Otto Graham rolling out of the pocket to his right. He's getting away now. He's out of the five. He hurdles over into the end zone for a touchdown. Graham is having this afternoon. That's his second touchdown of the afternoon. The score is now 27 to 10 in favor of the Cleveland Browns over the favored and defending National Football League champion Detroit Lions. Lou Groza will try for the extra point with Tommy James holding. Waiting for the snap from center. There it is. The ball is placed. The boot is up there and the kick is good. And so the score stands. Cleveland 28. The Detroit Lions, 10. A reminder, fans, to look for 
ask for Miller High Life whenever and wherever you buy beer. Yes, get the best by asking for the best. Always ask for Miller High Life. He picked up two yards at second down eight. From the 15 to the 17. And Detroit goes into a huddle so, uh, back inside that 10-yard line. Out come the Lions, and as they do, they send Doak Walker wide to the left. Doug Gerard is the right end. Dorn Dibble the left end. Bobby Lane back to pass on second down. Looks, he throws a sideliner, completes to Gerard, and Gerard gets, tries to get away, but he is stopped here on the 33, 34-yard line. Where it is good for the first down. Bobby Lane to his right end. Doug Gerard. Now they say that Gerard was stopped on the 32-yard line. First down 10 for the Detroit Lions with a score Cleveland 28 and Detroit 10. Three minutes and 35 seconds remain in the first half. Wide to the left goes Doak Walker. Bobby Lane, a quarterback, looks back. He steps back a couple of steps, throws out here. It's complete to Walker. He spins away from one man, but he can't. He gets up to the 40-yard line and pushed back to the 38. He spun away from one Cleveland pass defender, but was hit as he uh, moved out for yardage on the 40-yard line. And they say that he crossed the 40 to the 41. Bobby Lane to Doak Walker. Stopping Luke Carpenter. Third down and six for the Detroit Lions on their own 37-yard line. And number 37, Walker, set wide to the left. Gerard set up about 10 yards to the right. Here is Bobby Lane back to pass. He throws out here. This one is caught. It's stolen away by Walt Michaels down to 45, down to the 40. Walt Michaels down to the 35 and is caught to the 31. Boy, there is plenty of grand larceny out here today. That ball was stolen by Walt Michaels. And Cleveland, once again, is deep in Detroit territory, this time on the 31-yard line, first down and 10. 28 to 10 is the score. The Browns are pounding now, trying for another score. Football League statistics, after 12 seasonal games, is showing up well here again today, as the Browns, this year, allowed only 42% of the opposition's passes to be completed. Let's see what the Browns can do against the Lions. It's 28 to 10. Ball on the 31-yard line, Detroit 31. Here is Cleveland out of the tunnel, first down 10. Otto Graham back to pass, looking downfield. He throws a long looper down here to Renfro. He's got it, a beautiful catch in the end zone. to witness this year, Ray Renfro, the left halfback from North Texas State, down full speed inside the five-yard line, had gotten behind the Detroit pass defense. He leaned over, caught the ball below his knees, raced into the end zone to make the score 34 to 10. Throws it, trying for the extra point. Tommy James holding, the ball snap place, the boot is up there, and the kick is good. And that makes the score Cleveland, 35, the Detroit Lions, 10. First and 10 as the Lions move up now to their 35-yard line. The quarterback, Bobby Lane, is dropping back the pass, looking downfield. He's being rushed. No, he hasn't got much time. He throws to Walker on the 35, the 40. Walker to the 45, across the midfield. He's down to the 40, down to the 35, and he tips it around on the 35-yard line. Once again, this time it was Doak Walker being used as a safety precaution out of the right flat behind the line of scrimmage. Lane, who was almost hit, threw out of the right flat to Walker, and he traveled down that sideline. Can really move, and was finally uh, helped out of bounds on the 35 of Cleveland, where it's first and 10 for Detroit. So the clock stops at 1 minute and 25 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Detroit is trailing. The score is Cleveland 35, the Detroit Lions 10. As they come out, Andy McKee to the center is over the ball. 
Sylanker to the left this time. Back again to pass is Lane. Bobby's looking down. He throws here. A sideliner completes to Gerard. He is dumped on the 29-yard line, and he was hit very hard by number 24, Warren Lahr. And that time we had to wait until Lahr turned around because his back is all muddy. Unofficially, the statistics that we have, Bobby Lane for Detroit has completed a total of nine passes in 17 tries, while Otto Graham has thrown seven, completing four, three of them for TDs. It's 35 to 10 with only a minute and 15 seconds remaining in the first half of play. First and 10 now for the Detroit Lions down to the 24-yard line. Lane hands off on a reverse to Doug Walker. He's going to pass. He might run. Now he's down to the line of scrimmage, and he is hit very hard. The Doker was caught that time. He was circling as he came around on the uh, just about the old Statue of Liberty type play, taking the ball from Bobby Lane, circling to his left. It looked like he was going to throw. Everybody was covered, so Walker that time had a run, and he was dropped down. And that pipe play ate up a lot of time, so a timeout is called by the Lions to stop the clock with one minute and five seconds remaining. Walker managed to get back to the line of scrimmage, the 24-yard line, where it's now a second down and 10. Into the line goes Chuck Knoll for the Cleveland Browns. Chuck Knoll is going in. Now he just went in to check something with number 82, the second down and 10 on the Cleveland 24-yard line. Here's a quick pass. It's complete to Gerard. Gerard on the 15. Fumbles the ball as a big fight for the football. On the 15-yard line, let's see he'll recover that big skin. Cleveland Browns take over, stopping another Detroit threat. Pass was complete. Bobby Lane to Judd Girard. He was moving quickly to his left when he was hit from behind from the blind side and was dropped down. He lost the football, recovered by Cleveland on the 15-yard line where it's now a first and 10 for the Browns. And there is the gun ending the first half of this World Championship game with a score standing. The Cleveland Browns, 35, the Detroit Lions, in the first half of play, let's see how the scoring went. As Otto Graham has been in all of the five touchdowns scored by the Cleveland Browns, the game was only three and a half minutes old when Doak Walker kicked a 36-yard field goal, which was good, putting the Lions ahead three to nothing. And then the first quarter, six minutes old, Graham threw to Ray Renfro, climaxing a 45-yard scoring pass play, putting the Browns ahead six to three, and Lou Vitor Groza, on the conversion, it was 7-3. Just six minutes later, at the 12-minute part of the first quarter, it was a pass interception back-to-back -back that brought Otto Graham away from center on the snap. He threw to Darrell Brewster short, and Brewster went into the end zone, standing up 13-3, and Groza made it a 14-3 ball game. Reynolds, on a punt return, set up another Brown touchdown and the waning moments of the first quarter. The gun sounded ending the period and as the second quarter got underway, Otto Graham from inches away from the Detroit goal line went over on a quarterback sneak, putting the Browns ahead 20 to three and then Groza again with a point after it was 21 to three. Billy Bowman scored a touchdown in the second quarter for the De Detroit Lions after the Detroit club marched beautifully upfield Bowman going over he's the fullback making it a 20 to 9 ball game and Walker with the point after it was 21 to 10 Ray Renfro saved a pass and Otto Graham quickly moved in moved his club at the eight minute point of the second quarter Graham going around in for the touchdown it was 28 to 7 including Gross's conversion at the 13-minute point, only two minutes remaining in the first half, Graham, combined with Ray Renfro on a 31-yard scoring pass play, putting Cleveland in front 34 to 10. Groza made it 35 to 10, and that is the way it stands here at halftime in Cleveland, Ohio. The statistics here at halftime do not necessarily reflect what has happened in the first half of play as Detroit has racked up five first down, Cleveland four, yardage-wise, the net yardage rushing by Detroit has been 125 as compared to Cleveland's 55, as for the total yards gained, Detroit with 237, and for Cleveland, 155. 
here again is Earl Gillespie. The opening kickoff of the second half by Martin is send up Wren coming down, taken on the 10-yard line by Billy Reynolds. He cuts to, the, to his left to the 20, gets away from one man to the 25, and now he's hit here on the 26-yard line, dropped down to the 27. And the kicker that time, Jim Martin, was the boy who brought him down, helped out by Gil Maine. And number 70, the rookie from California, Gerald Perry. First down and 10 for the Cleveland Browns. Again, that kickoff brought back by the uh, high-stepping Mr. Billy Reynolds of the University of Pittsburgh. First down and 10 for the Cleveland Browns on their 31-yard line. Score 35 to 10. Cleveland has that big 20-point point lead. And they go in the huddle, standing back on the 20-yard line. The Browns come out. Over the ball at center, one of the greats in the game, Frank Gatsky in his ninth year. Flanker to the left, Otto Graham is the quarterback. Graham has his right end in tight. Otto Graham calling the signal, spins, he hands off this time, and it's passed up the middle for about three yards, and he's pushed back to the line of scrimmage. But he was hit by Les Bigelman on the line of scrimmage, or rather after he picked up three yards, out to the 34-yard line, and it's going to be second down and seven. Morris Bassett, who supposedly was going to be hobbled out here today by a thigh injury, has been running just like that uh, true horse that he is from that fullback spot. Wide to the right this time goes Billy Reynolds, out of Graham on second down and seven yard line. Graham back to pass. He looks, he there. throws the left back, complete the basket on the 35, the 40. Ooh, he is hit hard and drops down here on the 43 yard line. Pass on the left flat. Complete the basket behind the line of scrimmage. He was hit by Bob Miller. And Les Spiegelman helped out by number 20, the rookie from UCLA, Bill Stitz. It's good for the first and 10. First down, 10 yards to go for the Browns. They have the ball on their 44-yard line. Cleveland leading 35-10 to 10 over the Detroit Lions. And once again, the Browns huddle. Their huddle is split by the 35-yard line. As they come out, Graham sends right halfback Dub Jones wide to the right. The left end, Darrell Brewster set out about 10 yards. Danny Lavelli in tight to his tackle. Back to pass, Graham, he's going to run now. He moves off to his left side and is hit on the line of scrimmage and pushed across the 45, dropped down on the 46-yard line. Getting him that time was Joe Schmidt, Laverne Targuson, and Gil Maines. They say that Otto made it across the 45 to the 47-yard line. A gain of three yards, second down seven. Second and seven. And the shuttle system employed by Paul Brown in operation as he sends in the guard. Bradley to replace Chuck Noll with a play for Otto. Hey, here's the quarterback in a straight T formation. Graham fakes. He's back to pass being rushed now. He gets away from one man who was going to hit him back for about a 15-yard loss. Throws a long one down to Darrell Brewster. It's going to be a fight for the ball. And Darrell Brewster caught number seven. A beautiful catch. Darrell Brewster went up between Joe Walker and Jimmy David. As smooth as variable pitch dyna flow passes that record Buick power back to the rear wheels. Otto Graham is now six for eight in the passing department. And the Browns have a first and goal to go on the seven yard line of Detroit. And there was a great catch by Darrell Brewster who played his college football at, the, at Purdue University. Renfro checking off the playing field. Otto Graham first down on the four yard line. Otto Graham and the quarterback sneak goes down to the three, the two, the one, and is he in or not? Otto Graham is playing for his third quarter, his third touchdown of the afternoon. The uprights were shaken that time as a lot of the pro football players banged into it trying to stop Otto Graham, and where did he go? He went down to about the six inch line where it's second down. Second down and goal to go for the Cleveland Browns. They lead 35 to 10. We're in the first few minutes of play here in the second half. Out come the Browns. Wide to the left this time goes Renfro. Otto Graham, the quarterback, calling the signals. Otto Graham, quarterback, sneaks, and he's into the end zone for the score. And Mr. Cleveland Brown. Otto Graham has scored his third touchdown today. The score is now 41 to 10 in favor of Cleveland. 
Lou Groza will try for the extra point. Here comes Otto off the playing field. Running alongside his left end, Daryl Brewster getting a swell ovation. Groza trying for the extra point. Ball is snapped, it's placed, the boot is up in the air. This one is good, and the score is now. Cleveland, 42. The Detroit Lions, 10. As they break wide, center flanker wide to the left, John Girard. Bobby Lane, the quarterback, in a quick count. Back to pass, looks downfield, throws out the left flank, complete to Billy Bowman. Bowman trying to get away, and he is brought down on the line of scrimmage on the 20-yard line. Pass behind the line of scrimmage, complete in the left flat to the fullback Bowman. And as he zigged and zagged, he couldn't move away. He was dropped down on the 20. Second down, 10 yards to go. End of the tackle that time was Len Ford, the great defensive right end from the University of Michigan. Ball is 20 yards in from the far side of the playing field. Detroit Lions are moving towards the goal to the right of our mutual microphone. Flanker to the left, Jug Gerard once again. Here is Lane back to pass. He looks, he throws up the middle. This one is intercepted. Intercepted by Kenny Kahn on the 30, the 25, the 10. And he is caught finally outside the 10-yard line. He was caught at about the 12. Kenny Kahn intercepting that Bobby Lane pass on the 30-yard line and moving it down. So the Detroit 13, where it's going to be a first down and 10 for the Browns. Cleveland leading 42 to 10. Eight minutes and 30 seconds remain in the third quarter. Flanker to the right, Otto Graham, the quarterback, looking over that Detroit defense, a seven-man line. Here's a pitch out going wide to the former Chicago Bear Morris, and he's down to the five. All the way for the score. That is the first time that Fred Curley Morrison, a product of Ohio State, has carried the pigskin today. He made it count. A 12-yard gallop around his right end into the end zone. The score is now 48 to 10 in favor of Cleveland. Rosa is trying for another extra point. Tommy James holding. The ball is snapped. It's placed. The boot is up in the air. This one is good. And it's now the Cleveland Browns 49, the Detroit Lions 10. Getting all set for the next kickoff. And while we wait, here is Mr. Chris Schenkel. Ladies and gentlemen, I doubt if ever before Cleveland Brown fans have given their club such a tremendous ovation as you are just hearing, as it is a 49 to 10 ball game. Partisan crowd it is from Detroit today by a special train, 1,500 members of the Crisis Club from Detroit. It's a club that meets every Friday afternoon, and it's a club that has as a motto that every day is a crisis. And I would say that today especially is one for Lion fans. As the Browns have really rolled, let's see what the Lions can do with the Groza kickoff going from right to left. Earl? The deep men are Dirk Walker and Judd Girard. Here is the advance, the boot by Lou Groza. This one is end over end. It's not going too deep. Girard is coming out to the five, the six yard line. He grabs the football to the 10, the 15, the 20. Cutting to his right now. He gets away from one man trying to cut back. He gets across the 25, spins and is dropped down. Nice return by Jug Gerard. He was almost breaking out of the clear that time, but he was caught and spun around and dropped down on the 26. First down and 10 for the Detroit Lions. Now, I believe the quarterback is Tom Dublinski. Bobby Lane is out of there for the first time. Tom Dublinski in his third year with Detroit. 6'2", 190 pounds from Utah. And Dablinski sends Gerard wide to the left. He splits his right end. Here's the quarterback. Dablinski back to pass. He's looking downfield. He's going to run now. He tucks the football. Now he's going to throw and he's going to get hit. He is pulled down by Carlton Matthew back on the nine-yard line. Tom Dablinski was running around in that backfield and he couldn't find anybody clear. He was going to run, then he was going to pass. Took too much time to make up his mind and Massey... Dropped him down, back on the nine-yard line. 
Kowalski finished fourth in the passing statistics in the National Football League. He completed 55.8% of his passes, and he averaged 7.78 yards every time he threw a forward pass. 49 to 10, the Lions are trailing with the second down, 25 on the nine-yard line. Franker to the left, here is Dablinski back on the three-yard line. He throws out here a sideline, and it's caught by Jimmy, I think it's Dorr. No, it's Jeff Gerard. He was dropped down here on the 28-yard line. Up out of bounds by number 24, Warren Lahr. Pass complete from Tom Dublinski to Jug Gerard. And Jug was dropped down on the 27, the 27-yard line. Former LSU star, Louisiana State University, 5'10", 180-pounder, is standing back on the 32. In punt formation goes Jug Gerard. Gerard is standing on the 12, waiting for the pass from center. There's the pass, and Gerard gets his boot away. This is a low kick, twisting down, hitting down to the 35, rolls down to the 30, to the 25, picked up by Cons, and he is headed his tracks on the 20-yard line, first and 10 for Cleveland. Hit that time by Jimmy Doran. These Cleveland Browns fans are having a picnic out here at Municipal Stadium today. The score is 49 to 10 in favor of Cleveland, and they want another touchdown. Still plenty of time to go in this football game. We have seven minutes and ten seconds remaining in the third quarter. Out they come. Dub Jones is set wide to the left. The quarterback is Otto Graham. Yard line, a pitch out this time. To Morrison around the right side of the line. He circles his end, moves across the 15, uh, the 20, and is hit at about the 22-yard line by Jimmy David. Jimmy David helped out by Jerry Perry on the 22-yard line. Ball is 20 yards in from the far side of the playing field. The Cleveland Browns are moving towards the goal to our left. A seven-man line for the Detroit Lions. Here is Graham back to pass, looking downfield. It's batted in the air. This one is caught, and it's dropped. Caught and dropped on the 27-yard line by a Cleveland Brown. And they had, well, they call it a completed forward pass. It was Ray Renfro who hung out of the football. As he was hit, he dropped the ball. And it is. A completed forward pass, but it's fourth down five now, and back into a double safety, Jug Gerard and Doak Walker. Into a punt formation goes Horace Gillum. Gillum is standing back on the 10-yard line. There's the pass from center. Gillum has plenty of time. Here's his boot. A wobbly kick, not too deep, hitting on the 45 of Detroit, rolling down to the 40. Rolls down to the 35, down to the 30-yard line. Finally, it rolls down on the 28th. There was a tremendous roll in favor of the Cleveland Browns. And there is a flag on this play. A flag on the play as Gillum got the roll that time. It bounced on a hit on the Detroit 45 and rolled down to the Detroit 28-yard line. Big discussion going on between the 40 and the 45. As there were flags all over the playing field. Cleveland is leading 49 to 10 over the Detroit Lions, defending champions of the National Football League. Personal foul is called against the Detroit Lions. It's refused by the Cleveland Browns. So it is Detroit's football, first and 10, on the Lions' 28-yard line. This pass defense of Cleveland has been very sharp today. Tom Dublinski is the Detroit quarterback. Flank to the left this time is Dorn. Back to pass. The handoff this time on a reverse goes to Carpenter around the left side of the line. He's across the line of scrimmage, but he is hit down on the 29-yard line. Low Carpenter on the reverse, circling his left end, was hit down on the 29. By Walt Michaels, up 
picked up by Don Colo. Four minutes and 25 seconds remain in the third quarter. Detroit huddling on the 20. Second down nine, a gain of one yard by Carpenter on that reverse. Flanker to the left, Dorn. Gerard set wide to the right. Here's the quarterback, Doblinski, faking a pass. He throws out the right side, complete to Carpenter. He gets away from one man now across the 30 to 35, is still going, and has hit on the 40-yard line by Kenny Kahn. Kahn's really smashed into Luke Carpenter. And now we have a lot of excitement back here on the 23-yard line as a few of the players are mixing it up. Little battle going on back on the 23, and a timeout is called. Second down and nine. There were two penalties on the play. One offset the other, and it was second nine for the Detroit Lions. The quarterback, Tom Dublinski, handing off and circling wide that time was Carpenter. He moved across the 35-yard line to the 36, where it is short of the first down, so it is a third down and about three. Gerard set to the right. Dublinski at quarterback spins. Hands off to Carpenter once again. A flag on the play as Carpenter picks up the first and ten as he goes across the 40. Carpenter was hit. Brought down on the 41-yard line of Detroit. A penalty, though, was called on the play. Penalty was against the Cleveland Browns. Refused as Detroit picked up the first down on the 41-yard line. First and ten. It's a first down and 10 for Detroit on its 41-yard line. Flanker to the left. The right end set out 10 yards. Tom Dublinski at quarterback. Fakes. He's back to pass. He's going to get hit. He gets away from one man. He's going to run. He's across the 45 and has dropped down to the 46-yard line. A lot of fierce tackling taking place out here today. There was a fumble on this last play. I believe, no, there was a timeout called by the Detroit Lions as they have an injured player down here on the 45-yard line. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. This is WGN, the Chicago Tribune station, Chicago 11, serving the Middle West. Both clubs today are fighting to win the title, which climaxes a great National Football League season. So, too, are they fighting to win the winner's share of the championship game, which will probably average some above $2,000. Play is resumed now here in the third quarter, and here is Earl Gillespie. It was Tom Dublinski who was hurt. It's Bobby Lane back in there now. On second down and five, he throws down here. This one is almost intercepted. Intended for Judge Gerard. What? One of the officials took a seat here in the mud as he put the brakes on across the sideline stripe, but right down to the seat of his pants, down here on the 40-yard line of Cleveland. Bobby Lane trying to hit Chuck Gerard with a sideline pass incomplete over his head. So it is now third down five for the Detroit Lions on their own 45-yard line. Tom Dublinski was helped off the playing field. Bobby Lane is back in at quarterback. Lions out. With a flanker to the left. Here is Bobby Lane in a quick count. Back to pass. Goes out the right flat. Complete to the right halfback. Carpenter away from one man on the 50-yard line. He's caught from behind and pulled down on the Cleveland 45-yard line where it's a first and 10. But there is a flag on this last play, I believe. Let's check. A big one is coming up against the Cleveland Browns. 15 yards. Moves it down to the 30-yard line. A personal foul. Personal foul is called against the Cleveland Browns. It's first and 10 on the 30-yard line now for the Lions on the Cleveland 30. Flanker to the left. Quick count. Lane back to pass. Bobby's looking. He's in the pocket. He throws down to the end zone, and it's incomplete. <laughs> I think that ball was partially deflected by number 22, Kenny Kahn. Intended for the left end, Dorn Dibble, incomplete at second 10. The score, Cleveland 49, Detroit 10. 
Two minutes and 30 seconds remain in the third quarter here at Municipal Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio. Ball is 20 yards in from the near side of the playing field on the 30-yard line. Lions huddle back on the 40-yard uh, stripe. As they break the huddle, Doran moves wide to the left. Three ends in there now. Dibbles in there. Here's a quick count again. Bobby Lane back to pass. Throws incomplete to Gerard. Jug was cutting down to his left. Down and in. And he slipped and fell as he cut too sharply on the 20-yard line. Another incompleted forward pass. Third down, 10 yards to go. Cleveland's ball, or rather Detroit's ball in the Cleveland 30. Cleveland with that big 39-point lead. Dorn setting wide to the left. Dibble inside of him. Gerard wide to the right. Third down, 10. Here comes that possession down. And back to pass is Bobby Lane looking downfield. Throws out here. And it's caught by Dibbley's drop down. Or was that the Doker? Dorn Double was the boy who caught the ball and he was upended and dropped down on the Cleveland 17, 18 yard line. First and 10. Detroit on the march right now. With two minutes and 10 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Ball 20 yards in from the far side of the playing field. First and 10. On the 18-yard line, Lane back to pass. Throws out the right flat to Carpenter. He ties the cut and he slips and falls. Back on the 18-19 yard line. Hit by Tommy Catlin. Pass was complete, but Carpenter that time, that time trying to cut sharply to his left, slipped and fell. It is slippery going on the playing field as we check the playing condition of the field prior to coming up into our mutual radio booth. Off the field comes number 72, Johnny Kessel, who's played himself a whale of a ball game in that Cleveland line. Second down, 11 yards to go. There was a loss of a yard on the play. The ball is back on the 19-yard line. Lane dropping back to pass, being rushed. Throws a short screen that is complete to Carpenter, looking for his interference now. He cuts brought down once he gets up the goal he's down inside the 15 yard line and he's down to the 12. Green pass complete to Lou Carpenter. Tackle by Kenny Kahn there's plenty of action down there in that playing field and on the road too when you switch the pitch of Buick's new variable pitch Dynaflow. Not much time left in this third quarter. Fourth down, two yards to go on the 10-yard line. A quick pass is complete to Gerard. He's on the five, and he is hit on the five. Hit by Kenny Kahn. There is the gun. Marking the end of the third quarter. Cleveland has that 49-10 lead over the defending champions of the National Football League, the Detroit Lions. So step in, Chris Schenkel. And as the score stands at 49-10, as we await the start of the fourth period, the 1955 Buick scores high on beauty, no doubt about that. But brother, first and foremost, the 55 Buick is built to perform. Beneath Buick's bold styling is the greatest power team in the field today. Buick's tremendously advanced big V8 that steps up to 236 horsepower. And teamed up with that record high power is the newest transmission development in years. Buick's airplane-inspired variable pitch Dynaflow Drive. The power propellers inside Dynaflow switch the pitch like the blades of a modern airplane propeller with just as exact sighting results. You get an instant surge of power for thrilling takeoff or safe passing just by pushing the accelerator past full throttle. And with Dynaflow's blades and cruising pitch, you get remarkable fuel economy. What other car offers such performance, such economy, and such beauty? Tomorrow, sure, see and drive the 55 Buick. Your Buick dealer has one of these superbly styled, sensational performers waiting for you. Take that wheel and see for yourself why the 55 Buick is the thrill of the year. First down on the six-yard line, uh, Bobby Lane throws down the left flat. This one is intercepted by the Cleveland Browns. 
and it's Cleppa led 40. He might go all the way. He's to the 30, the 35, the 40. Across the midfield, and he is finally caught from behind. 24 took that ball out of midair. A pass to the left flat, which is a very dangerous pass as it is. Ford grabbed it. Boy, and he really ambled. 250 pounds rolling down the field. He was caught from behind and pulled down on the 45-yard line. The Detroit 45, first and 10 for Cleveland. We're in the last quarter of play. That is the fourth interception by the very alert defensive unit for the Cleveland Browns. Out of the huddle comes Cleveland. Otto Graham is still the quarterback. Billy Renfro, or rather Billy Reynolds, will set wide to the left on the Detroit 45-yard line. Graham hands off to Morrison. Morrison goes down to about the 42. And there might be a penalty on this last play as there are some very heated feelings between these two ball clubs who have had the opportunity to meet, meet each other three times in the postseason classic of pro football. And it's going to be a 15-yard penalty against Detroit for piling on. Personal foul. Personal foul, and the football is put down on the 26-yard line of Detroit. 14 minutes and 30 seconds remain of the 1954 championship game. Dawson is third down eight. Cleveland inside that 30. On the 24-yard line, flanker to the right as they break the huddle, Billy Reynolds, Otto Graham on third down eight, calling signals, sends a man in motion now, Chet Hanulak, wide to his left, the pitch out, Morrison fumbles, a loose football is recovered by Detroit. Pitch out going from the quarterback, Otto Graham, to his fullback, Curly Morrison, he fumbled the ball, is recovered by Detroit. And on the bottom of that pile with the football is Gerald Perry. So the Lions take over. Ball on the 25-yard line, first down and 10. In goes Leon Hart, Bobby Lane, Dorn Dibble. In a five yards, second and five on the 40. Here's a pass up the middle. This one is deflected, intercepted by Kenny Kahn. On the 50, down to the 45, he goes down to the 40, the 39. Cut by Joe Walker. Kenny Kahn. How about that one? Throws a punny this afternoon. And for the thrill of the year, sample the hot performance of the 1955 Buick. Another pass interception for the Cleveland Browns. Kahn, second of the day. They now have five and all. And it's Cleveland's ball, first and ten, on the 40-yard line of Detroit. Otto Graham at quarterback. Carpenter is one of the backs, Billy Renfro, or rather Billy Reynolds. And Hanulak, the handoff goes to Hanulak on a quick opener up the middle. He goes down to the secondary, across the 20, down to the 15-yard line, down in, inside the 15. They might have caught him on that 15, and there was a great run by the rookie from the University of Maryland who got his tutoring from Jim Tatum down there at Maryland, Chet Hanulak. 180 pounds, and that was a blinding speed that time as he burst up the middle down to the 16. First down and 10 for the Cleveland Browns. Hanulak this time is set wide to the left. Otto Graham looking over the Detroit defense. The fans are yelling, go, go, go for these Cleveland Browns. Here's the head up to Reynolds. Reynolds pounding down to the 10, down to the 9. He's stopped by Jerry Perry. A reminder, fans, remember that big postseason game scheduled for January 16th at the Coliseum in Los Angeles, California. The all-pro bowl game, and that is always a thriller. The tops in pro football on display at the Coliseum on January 16th. Second down and four, nine yards to go to a touchdown. The Cleveland Browns knocking on the door once again. Franker to the right, Otto Graham, the fearless passer, is calling signals. Otto Graham, the former Northwestern great, looks over that defense. This time he hands off to Hanulak. He's in the five, and he's into the end zone. What a run! third 
quarter and the fourth quarter have turned this game into a complete rout. Now a go ahead by the amazing score of 55 to 10. Time with the extra point. Lou grows in the ball snap. This place, the boot is up there. This one is good. The kick is good. The score is now Cleveland. 56. Detroit, 10. And Chris, this is one of the most amazing football games I think I have ever seen. And with the Cleveland Browns undoubtedly winning at Earl, it will be one of the greatest team victories in this professional championship game. As offensively, the Browns have scored with Otto Graham throwing three touchdown passes, scoring three himself, Curly Morrison bulling over for another, and now the rookie from Maryland, Chet Hanulak. What a display, and of course, as the Detroit Lions are held to their lowest point total thus far during the entire 1954 season with only 10 points, what more can you say for a defensive unit like Coach Paul Brown has fielded here in Cleveland, Ohio today? Big flanker to the left once again for Detroit. Here's Bobby Lane. Back to pass. Being rushed. He throws a sideliner. This one is caught. And the boy who caught the ball is pulled down on the 41-yard line. Pass was complete to Dorn Dibble. Well, While we have a chance, let's pause. Ten seconds for station identification. This is Mutual, the radio network for All-America. This is WGN, the Chicago Tribune Station. Chicago 11, serving the Middle West. First down and 10 on the 42-yard line for Detroit. Bobby Lane in a bootleg. He's back to pass. He throws. It's intercepted this time by Lenny Ford off the hands of the Detroit line. And Ford is dropped down on the Cleveland 48. Now, here comes Otto Graham off. Listen to this tremendous ovation. for one of the great quarterbacks in the history of pro football. Peerless Otto Graham, who has announced that this is his last professional football game. Today, Otto Graham threw three touchdown passes, scored three touchdown passes, or scored three touchdowns, rather. An amazing exhibition for a guy who had a lot of trouble against these Detroit Lions in past exhibitions. Quarterback. George Rademan on a quarterback sneak comes up here to about the nine yard line where he is put down there is the gun marking the end of the 1954 National Football League Championship game an amazing score as the Cleveland Browns overpowered the Detroit Lions the favored Lions 56 to 10 and that's it fans the rip-roaring, unbelievable climax to another exciting season of professional football. We've just witnessed the dawning of a new champion. And your friendly hosts have been that national champion of quality, Miller Highlight. And so until next we meet, this is Earl Gillespie saying goodbye and good luck. And reminding you that it's always a grand idea to enjoy life with Miller Highlight, the genuine Milwaukee beer. <laughs>